have a communion healing service, but I will first of all invite to speak uh, dear brother from Abuja, senior pastor of Summit Bible Church, Dr. Andy Osakwe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to God and thank him for what he has already started. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for all the things you have already started doing among us. We give you all the praise. Glory be to your name. Glory and honor and praises. Be unto our great King. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody say with me, say, I have the God faith. I have the God faith in my spirit. I can believe at the God class. I can believe anything that God says. I have the ability to believe it. And I make a decision. I will believe it. I am a believer. I have the nature to believe. I believe. I do not doubt. Shout hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Please be seated. What an amazing conference so far. Amen. God is really doing something this year, something. And I believe that's why uh, Pastor Boju was led to, uh, you know, have this title, this, this theme. Amen? Because God has some amazing things. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Let's appreciate our wonderful, our wonderful ordained ministers of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I was listening to uh, 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 Pastor Yemi Davids and uh, Pastor Kingsley this afternoon. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Were you not blessed this afternoon? James chapter 2. James chapter 2 and verse 26. James chapter 2 and verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get healed tonight. And you are going to receive healing by faith tonight. Say amen if you believe it. Somebody's going to step out of affliction tonight. That affliction will not be a problem anymore in your life from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. It says, go back to the scripture please. As a body without a spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So how dead is faith without works? It is as dead as a corpse. It's as dead as a dead body. Why? How? It is not productive. No results. Without works, faith has no results. I said there are three main works of faith that we must engage, especially this year, so we can do the greater works of God and see the impossible become a possibility. Say amen. amen. The first is mental. The first work of faith is a mental action. The second is verbal. And the third is physical action, which is movement. But the first is important. Mental action. There's activity of the mind that must correspond with what you believe. Hallelujah. Let me show you something here. Hebrews 11 verse 1, quickly. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11. Can I have somebody please, uh, somebody to help me? I want to just come up with, with, with a chair. Bring a chair as you come up. Just come up with a chair. 
Anybody? I want to demonstrate something, please. Just bring a chair. Okay. Hallelujah. Just put a chair there. And then uh, you can just stand beside the chair. Don't go. I need you. Amen. All right. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's go there. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, the word substance means support. It means foundation. So, faith is the foundation of things hoped for. Or faith is the support of things hoped for. All right? So, we have a support here. This chair is a support. All right? And then he's going to sit on this chair. Go ahead, sit. Praise the Lord. So, this chair is faith. And this is hope. Glory to God. Now, the word hope means expectation. Show me a man that has expectation. I will show you a man that believes God. Because faith is the foundation of your expectation. Now, let me break down the word expectation. Let me make it simple. Because expectation literally means imagination. Your imagination. What you visualize is what you expect. You can only visualize what you expect. So your imagination is actually how you express your expectation. So now you have faith. I'll give an example. I believe that I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's my faith. My faith is in the word of God. What about my hope? Well, everybody's different. Somebody has asthma. Another person has migraine. Somebody else has cancer, right? So the expectation differs from person to person. But the faith remains the same. Does that make sense? The faith is a support. So for this person that has cancer, he's, he should expect to be free from cancer. For the one that has asthma, he should expect to be free from asthma. That's his expectation. But the expectation is not crystallized until you imagine it. So the man that has cancer should imagine himself free from cancer. How will your life be if you are free from that disease that has plagued you for so long? You have to imagine it. This is proactive. It's not accidental. You have to actually sit down and imagine yourself free from something. Free from poverty. Say amen, somebody. You have to imagine the end product. Where you want to arrive, you have to imagine it. That is an action of faith. Listen to me. God cannot take you where he cannot show you. If God wants to take you somewhere, he's going to come and he's going to show you something. God needs us to imagine. That's why he gave us a mind. He wants us to imagine the victory. You have to imagine it. You have to imagine yourself promoted. You have to imagine how this year will end up. Say amen, somebody. We can't just have vague expectations. We must crystallize our expectations by our imagination. Someone say imagination. Let me give you an example. Go with me to Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Why is this important? Because if you leave it to your physical sight, all you will see is the circumstance. All you will see is the physical problem. You have to go beyond what you see in the physical so that you can release your faith to receive from the realm that is unseen. Look what happened here in, uh, in Joshua 6 verse 1. Joshua 6 1. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. They were scared of the children of Israel, so they shut the doors of the, of the walls of Jericho. None went out and none came in. So what you have is a wall around, a huge wall around the city. And that's all they can see with their physical eyes. Watch this now. Please keep the scripture up. And the Lord said to Joshua, see. See what? See with which eyes? Because all they can see at that time is a wall. Am I correct? All they can see is a wall that shut the city up. But look at what God wants him to see. 
see, I have given what? Jericho into your hand. You have to see it. In other words, imagine. Imagine Jericho in your hands. Say amen. amen. It's a king. Imagine the king of Jericho under your feet. Imagine the mighty men of Velo under arrest. You have to imagine it. You see, God wanted him to go into Jericho, but wanted Joshua, first of all, to imagine the victory. You see, we have to imagine the victory before we can advance. The reason why many have not advanced is because they can't see it. And God will speak to you. And God will get you to look so you can see something. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. So what I want to ask you is, what can you see in 2024? What can you see? Hallelujah. So that this conference would not just be like any other conference. What do you see? The Lord began to deal with me about imagination. And the Lord would get me to bring paper and start to write down, start to visualize what I want to see concerning any project. So I began to write it down. And I found out something. The more I wrote it down, the more I heard from the Holy Ghost. Because when you start to visualize, he will join forces with you and help you visualize according to the perfect will of God. Is somebody here with me? But visualizing is a step of faith. We have to imagine by faith. Glory to God. Some of you are here, you have symptoms, different kinds of symptoms. Imagine yourself free. Hallelujah. Imagine yourself free from that pain. Imagine it. Glory to Jesus. Imagine that contract in your hand. Say amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Imagine the victory. Imagine the freedom. Imagine the solutions. Imagine your husband. For those of you who need husband, have you imagined? Glory to God. It's a step in the right direction. Hallelujah. For those of you who are having struggles in your marriage, can you imagine a good home? Blissful marriage. You have to imagine it. Amen. Imagine your product in its finished state. Imagine it. You have to sit down and imagine these things. Glory to God. This is work, oh. It's work. It's not just by accident. You have to proactively, you have to sit down and you have to start to imagine things. Hallelujah. Imagine the healthy state, full recovery. Imagine conception. You're having difficulty having a child. Imagine conception. Imagine yourself having twins. Say amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. Imagine what good success will look like with you in it. Hallelujah. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Close your eyes for, for, for a moment. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine yourself in your best possible state. Just imagine. Imagine yourself without all this, you know, I was listening to the message, all these all this witches chasing you. Hallelujah. Imagine yourself, you are, you are, you are soaring above, above the storm. Imagine yourself prosperous. Can you imagine yourself to be billionaires? Can I have any billionaires in the house? Yes. See, no, not, not all of you are shouting because some of you cannot imagine yourselves. It will be difficult to become a billionaire if you can't imagine yourself as a billionaire. Are you understanding what I'm saying? One time the Lord spoke to me and says, when you get to church, start speaking about billions as if it's a common thing. Why? So that the people will catch it. They'll be able to capture it in their imagination. Or else they won't advance. They will still think small. So I'm looking at a, at a crowd of billionaires. I'm still not getting the right response. Only 20% of you are excited. Hallelujah! If you don't want your own billions, just don't worry. I'll take it for you. Say amen, somebody. This is a crowd of billionaires. Those of you watching online, there's a crowd, multitudes. 
Because God is raising multitudes in the last days to finance his work. Glory to God. Maybe one of you will be the first trillionaire. I'm, I'm just trying to push your imagination to see, to, 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 see, to see how far it can go. Hallelujah. Maybe one of you will be the first trillionaire. Why not? Just imagine people here, you guys owning airlines. Airlines. You see, I'm, I'm losing the crowd. I'm losing the crowd. Listen, there's no tax on imagination. There's no tax. That's the beauty of imagination. There's no tax. You can sit down by yourself in your house and imagine all kinds of things. Glory to God. But the key is to make sure your imagination is supported by what? Your faith. See? So you must start with your faith. And then you can only imagine effectively what you can believe for. Are you with me here? Glory be to Jesus. So tonight, we're going to have a healing meeting tonight. I need you to, when you come out tonight, imagine yourself free. I don't care if it's been like that for 10 years. Imagine yourself free. It doesn't matter what the doctor said. Because sometimes when we, we, we pay more regard to what the doctor said than to what God said. So our imagination is according to what the doctor said. I heard this, and this is a true story. I was told that somewhere in Florida, something happened. Two people went for uh, tests. They went for medical tests. One of them had colon cancer, and the other was free. So they went and did the test. Now, after the, the results came out, the administration made a mistake and gave the man who didn't have cancer, gave him the result of the man that had cancer and gave the man who had cancer the result of the man who didn't have cancer. True story. Now, the man that was given the result that he had cancer had no cancer, but he was told by the doctors based on the prognosis, six months, you have six months left. He died before six months. The other man lived. How do you explain that? Not even by power of Jesus Christ. He lived. He left that place jumping and jubilating. He saw himself well. He started planning his future. This guy that was well, he saw himself terminated. All his dreams stopped. No more imagination. Imagination is hope. Where there's no hope, the people perish. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This year, I want you to raise up the standard. Raise up your imagination. Glory to God. If you can imagine it, you can have it. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you can imagine victory in 2024, you shall have it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still here with me? Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. You have to imagine. I think I can release you now. <laughs> you know, I, I, I heard his prayer to God. Lord, why is this guy? Why wouldn't this man allow me to go? Now he has finished his illustration. Praise the Lord. The Lord answered his prayers. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. They're about to go into the promised land. Listen to how God operates. See. Now, they haven't gone in yet. God is saying see. What is see here? It's not physical. If you look at this word, see, it means imagine. It says, imagine. I have set the land before you. Go in and what? Possess the land. Why? Because there were enemies on the land. So they had to visualize that God has already given us this land. It's mine. Say amen. amen. See, go back there. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. See. See. What do you see? What you see is possible. Did you hear what I said? If you can see it, then it is possible. If you can see it, then you can reach it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go to Numbers 21, verse 4. Numbers 21, verse 4. Somebody's going to see something great tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to see it. You have to see it. One of the reasons why we have scripture is to help us see. Amen. Because the entrance of the word brings light. And when there's light, you see. Amen. Look at Numbers 21, verse 4, please. Then they journeyed from Mount Hall by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. Next verse. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food, no water. Our soul loves this worthless bread. These guys were very interesting. Anybody would get a nod, even God. Hallelujah. They were so used to complaining. Go back. So the Lord did what? Sent fiery or fiery serpents among the people. Fiery serpents. What does that mean? Angry snakes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Angry snakes. Snake with the head on fire. Angry snakes. Scripture, please. Please keep the scripture on the screen. Thank you. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Next verse. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. Obviously you have sinned. Amen. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Now look at this. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent. Set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Next verse. So Moses made a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now watch this. Go back, go back, go back to that. Go back. He made a bronze serpent. Bronze symbolizes judgment. So what did God do? God made him make a serpent that was judged and raise it up and if you look at the, the, the language it says you must focus your gaze on that serpent which one? the one that is judged meanwhile you have living serpents around you and God says look at that judged serpent and you will live question how easy is it to look at a bronze serpent when you have a living serpent. Amen. Amen. This is how it is in life. God tells you to look at something, but you have real problems, real problems around you, real problems. And God says, stop looking at those problems. Look at Jesus. Say amen, somebody. Are you understanding what's going on here? So just imagine somebody comes, right? And then they say, look at the bronze serpent. And then you're trying to look at the bronze serpent, but you can hear screams and shouts of people being bitten by snakes. How many of you know you want to remove your eyes from that serpent and look at the one that's biting people? Am I correct? And it says, don't look, just keep looking. You hear somebody shout, hey! You want to look, keep looking. Keep looking. You hear men, when men lose their manhood, Men that are powerful, when, when they receive fiery snake, you see men, hey, 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you supposed to keep looking? Keep looking. Don't look away. Keep looking. Keep looking. And if you keep looking, what happens? You will live. You will live. Hallelujah. Which means I must have a strong imagination concerning the will of God and I must keep it in front of me because if not, my eyes will stray and I will start looking at all the problems, all the symptoms. You see what I'm saying? All the challenges and once I look at them and I focus too much on them, what happens? Death. Amen. If there's ever a time for us to focus, it is now. Say amen. Amen. How do I focus? Use your mind. You see, this mind is the battleground. 
Hallelujah. This is where all kinds of thoughts are coming, all kinds of thoughts. You can come to church and hear the word and get excited, and then before you get home, everything, all your excitement can vanish because your mind went on something. And Satan is an expert at bringing thoughts that contradict what you have believed. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I was in, in a, 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 a co-hospital some years ago. And I was dying. I was dying. And so I knew I was dying because, you know, I mean, my case was bad, serious lung infection. And I could see even from the nurse's eyes that they have given up on this guy. So everybody's just, you know, doing what they have to do. And then they left me and, and they, they went. And I was just there with my mom. And all my mom would did was cry. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You know, just cry. Hallelujah. I mean, even know, crying cannot set you free. So what did the Lord do? The Lord began to speak to me. One, 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 one verse of scripture. He said, you will live and not die. Amen. And as soon as the Lord said it, I knew what I was supposed to do. When the Lord gives you a word, you pick it. Amen. You make it your imagination and your confession. Praise the Lord. I closed my eyes. And I began to say, I will live and not die. I will live and not die. And I began to see myself alive. Say amen. amen. Sometimes you have to start planning your future to stay alive. Are you getting my point? I began to imagine and I began to speak. It wasn't easy. Three hours later, around three, this is about 12 midnight, around 3.30 or so, I felt grace come on my body hallelujah i began to sweat and then all those convulsions ceased and i sat up when i sat up my mom started crying because according to what she understands when people are about to die that is when they finally they finally sit up <laughs> because maybe they have a last last message for you before they go so she just went down hey 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 hallelujah but i knew I was good to go. Say amen, somebody. Amen. What kept me alive? Hope. Hope. Hope will keep you alive. Say amen. amen. Hope will keep you alive in 2024. Amen. You will not die. You will live. Amen. You will live to see the goodness of God. You will live to do exploits in 2024. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That sickness will not take you out. I said, that sickness will not take you out. And that sickness will not follow you past January. Say amen. amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We have to start to visualize. Visualize it. Glory to God. Visualize your business in the next phase. Visualize it. Hallelujah. Visualize new streams of income visualize it visualize it look at john chapter 3 john 3 and 15. john 3 and 15. Uh, go to verse 14 verse 14. You remember that story that we just read in numbers well Jesus made reference, he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Next verse. That whoever believes in him should not what? Perish, but have eternal life. So we're to do with that serpent, we're to do the same when we think, when we imagine what Jesus did for us at the cross. So my final scripture, let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, and verse 1. Glory be to Jesus. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Next verse. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Talking about the redemptive work of Jesus. Next verse. 
He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. We did not esteem him. Watch this now. Surely. Someone say surely. surely. What does surely mean in your village? Answer me now. Yeah? Surely. He has what? Borne our griefs. Right? And done what? Carried our what? Sorrows. Now, that's not the best translation. If you want to look at the original language, let's look at, let's look at, uh, at Amplified. Give me Amplified, the same verse. Amplified version. Surely he has borne our what? Griefs. What does that mean? Sicknesses. Weaknesses and what? Distresses. He has borne. I'm trying to show you what to imagine, though. Because our imagination is based on what? Our faith. So our persuasion is that Isaiah 53 verse 4. He has born. So now, whatever sickness is in your body is a lie. It is a literal lie. That's why you have the right to resist it. And reject it because it is not authorized. Say amen. If Jesus bore it, why should you bear it? Are you here with me? Surely he has borne our griefs. What does that mean? Our sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses. And then carried our sorrows. Pain. That word sorrow means pain. And that means pain represents every symptom, every other symptom. Pain is representative of symptoms, which means that Jesus dealt with the sickness as well as the symptoms. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. So that pain has no right to be in your body. Did you hear what I said? Those symptoms have no right to be in your body. Why? Jesus carried them. This is reality. Hallelujah. That cancer has no right to be in your colon. Why? Jesus bore it. Every sickness known to mankind, Jesus bore it. Every sickness. Hallelujah. Every sickness, he bore it. This is reality. So what am I supposed to do? Imagine. Imagine. Whatever is plaguing you, take that thing and imagine it being born by Jesus. Whatever symptom you're passing through, take that symptom. Imagine it being carried away by Jesus. And if Jesus has borne it, and if he's carried away the symptoms, then why is it still on my body? You see what I'm saying? That means it is what? Illegal. It is illegal. And I have a right to resist whatever is what? Illegal. So I can say, go from my body. I heard, I heard, I heard Brother Higgins say something that, that shocked me. He was, he was being interviewed by a TV station. And he said in 65 years of ministry, he has only had a headache three times. And he said the headache he had was maybe a few seconds. So the man asked him, right, so how did you fix it? He said, I said, go, and it left. Now, but he said, go with revelation. Is somebody here with me? He knows that it has no place on his head. Do you know that that stomach upset has no place in your tummy? Because Jesus bore it. This is a simple gospel. What am I supposed to do? Imagine it. Let your imagination be consistent with the gospel. And then let your words be consistent with the gospel. And then let your movement be consistent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you still here with me, somebody? Glory be to Jesus. One time I was having some terrible symptoms. And it just caused me to be bedridden. I couldn't move. I couldn't, move. I couldn't do anything. And I was just disturbed. I was like, Lord, what's going on? 
And the Lord told me, what do people who are well do? And I thought about it. I said, well, for one thing, they will not be lying on the bed like I've been lying on the bed for how many days? The Lord said, get up. I didn't have an appetite. And the Lord said to me, go and eat. So I went and I brought the food. I didn't feel like eating. It was a struggle. But I forced myself to eat. I almost threw up, but I stayed there. And I noticed when I finished eating, I felt better. Say amen, somebody. Oh. <laughs> These things are so practical. Oh. We're the ones that like making everything so esoteric. Amen. The Lord said to me, okay, go and take a bath. If not, take a bath for some days. Hello. So I went and stood under the shower, and the shower just came. I stayed there for some time. When I left the shower, I felt better. Say amen. amen. What next? I took a walk and enjoyed the breeze. Hallelujah. When I came back, I felt better. And I just kept doing things. Before I knew it, it was gone. It just disappeared. I can't tell you exactly when it left. It just left. Why? Because I got tired. How many of you are tired of, of being tired or being sick? <laughs> Say amen. Yeah. Can this be your last day of sickness? Can it be? Can you imagine that this could be your last day of that sickness? Can you imagine it? Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Let me close with this. I read this in the morning, but I, I want to go back here and show you something from this same uh, text. Go to Acts 14. Acts 14, verse 7. Acts 14, verse 7. This story is so powerful because it shows us how faith works. Acts 14, verse 7. And they were preaching the gospel there. Just like we're preaching the gospel here. Say amen. amen. Watch this. In Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting. A cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. Important information. He has never walked. He doesn't know how to walk. It's not that he was walking, then something happened, and then he couldn't walk again. He doesn't know how to walk. Next verse. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. What did Paul see? His expression. There was something about his expression. What was Paul preaching? Somebody help me again. What was Paul preaching? The gospel. Now, stop there. Please, please try and keep the scriptures for me. It's easier for me. I don't like seeing myself like this. Hallelujah. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now stop there, we'll come back here. But let's go back to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. We'll come back to that, that verse. Romans 1 and 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Next verse. For in it, the righteousness of God is what? Revealed. So when the light of the gospel comes, some things are what? Revealed. I gave an example in the morning. Some things are wrong and some things are right by God's standard. That's righteousness. So for instance, sickness is what? Wrong. Health is what? Right. That's the way it works. Am I correct? So guess what? Go back to that uh, scripture, Acts 14 verse 9. So this man hears Paul preaching. I wonder what Paul is preaching, the gospel. And so as Paul is preaching, God's righteousness is revealed. And the man can see himself according to God's standard. And according to God's standard, he's not a cripple. He's not a cripple. Hallelujah. According to God's standard, you don't have sickness. According to God's standard, though. Hallelujah. But you have to imagine it. Before I finish that scripture, a man of God gave it a testimony. He said there was a guy that had uh, cancer somewhere in the abdomen, right? And he, he, he ministered to the guy, tried to minister, and somehow the guy wasn't getting it. So he went back and prayed to God. And then he fell into a trance. And God showed him the same man. And the man had no cancer. And he asked God, says, Lord, this man you are showing me has no cancer. But the man I'm talking about has cancer. And the Lord said to him, the real state of that man is this. Because Jesus bore the cancer. 
So go back and tell the man he has no cancer. Let him believe what God has said. Let him imagine himself free from cancer. And I went and told the man the same thing. Within a few weeks, the man was well. How do you explain that? Imagination. Someone say imagination. Go back to Acts. So Paul observing him intently, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Next verse. Say with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And the man didn't stand up straight. What did the man do? Leaped and walked. Why? Because his imagination was not standing. What he was seeing, he saw himself doing what? Leaping and walking. The man has always wanted to jump. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. So he wasn't going to allow Paul to limit him. Oh. Don't even allow the preacher to limit you. Listen, the, the preacher's imagination, right, concerning you is often limited. But you can take it to another dimension. Say amen, somebody. So what we're doing here is to stir you up. How far you go is up to you. And a lot has to do with your imagination. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory be to God. Can you imagine something great tonight? Hallelujah. Shall we rise on our feet? My time is almost up, but I want us to do something. We're going to imagine. Amen? I'm just going to give you just three minutes. I don't know what you're passing through. If it is, of course, tonight is healing, right? So if, if you have any symptoms in your body, right, I want you to imagine yourself free from it. But even if you don't have any symptoms or any form of sickness, I want you to imagine yourself according to what God has spoken to you concerning his plan for you this year. Imagine yourself prosperous. Imagine yourself successful. Imagine that thing that God has started. Imagine it completed. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right, so close your eyes. Don't worry, I will not steal your wallet. Close your eyes. <laughs> I want you to imagine, imagine, imagine. Take some time, imagine. Imagine the prosperity of God. Imagine the wealth. Just imagine. There's no, there's no, there's no tax. No tax on imagination. No tax. No punishment for imagine, imagining too much. Just imagine. Imagine yourself free from those symptoms. Free. Imagine yourself free from sickness. In other words, from, from, from this conference, your walk will change and you walk without sickness. And if the sickness comes, you deal with it easily because you know what Jesus has done for you. Imagine. Imagine yourself married. Imagine yourself married. Imagine yourself with conception, with your child or your children. Imagine it. Imagine that pain gone, gone forever. Never again. That pain gone. That pain of seven years gone forever. Imagine. Imagine yourself delivered from poverty. Set free. Imagine yourself with a contract. You're, ch you're chasing that contract and you've been chasing it and then now it's in your hands. Imagine. Glory to Jesus. Imagine. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and begin to thank God. Thank him like it's done. Thank him like it's done. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Get excited about what the Lord has done. He has done it before he did it. Say amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Rejoice. 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 Rejoice like you have it. 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 If you had a billion dollars in your hand, how will you be rejoicing now? <laughs> Hallelujah! You will be jumping and shouting and turning around and making some noise. Am I correct? Hallelujah! And that's an act of faith. So I want you now in the next one minute, I want you to rejoice. The kind of rejoicing you will rejoice if they put a billion dollars in your hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on. 
come on. Glory to Jesus. Rejoice like you have it. Those of you watching online, rejoice like you have it. Hallelujah. One more thing. When things happen in your life, big things, and I'm using this on purpose, imagine, just imagine, 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 yeah, that somebody walked up to you and gave you one Do you know, huh? There's no how you will not shout. Right? But not just that. It will change the way you laugh. Your laughter will change. Am I correct? Before they gave you one billion dollars, if you were laughing, ka -ka 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 -ka, when they give you one billion dollars, your laugh will change. Is somebody here with me? So I want to hear, for the next two minutes as I close, I want to hear one billion dollar, one billion dollar laughter. Some of you are not even laughing because you can't even see it. You can't even visualize it. Listen, listen, listen. We will still laugh, but let me tell you something. Eh? Some of you are wondering, one billion dollars, why? Listen, listen. We are qualified as children of the Most High. One billion is nothing. Are you with me? Your father is the richest personality in the universe. Listen, when your father gets bored, he rolls up a new planet, a new galaxy. If God were to sell the moon, will it help your business? Are you ready to laugh now? Listen, it will cost you nothing to laugh. But one thing I found that when you laugh like you should, there's a release of power. Are you in the right place? Can I get a laughter from you? One, two, three, fire. Come on. Laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Laugh. Laugh like it's in your hands. Laugh like the sickness is gone. You have your manifestation. Laugh. Laugh. Like the cancer is gone. Laugh. Like your story has changed. Laugh. Ha 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 ha. Find somebody quickly. Find somebody. Hold somebody's hand. Find a laughing partner quickly. A laughing partner. A laughing partner. For the next 30 seconds. A laughing partner. Eyeball to eyeball. Oh yeah, laugh, 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 laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Laugh, come on, laugh. Laugh. Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. His days are numbered. Days are over. Laugh. Laugh the laugh of the victorious. Visualize your victory. Visualize your process. Visualize your progress. 